Okay, everybody, thank you so much for coming. It's just really great to see you all here. Um, many of you who are returning, which is great, and many of you who are for the first time, which is like really cool. So thanks again. Um, I think you'll be happy to know that I do not have a lengthy speech for you to start off. Um, I did want to ask one question. Is John Ward here? Uh, John, I've been, you know, I pay attention to you guys on Twitter, Facebook, and stuff like that. John, is it true you haven't been out of town for five years? Uh, it's true that I haven't been out of town. <laughs> okay, well, I'm glad you're finally getting out of town. Welcome. <laughs> Um, what we're going to do now, um, as we did last year, is uh, turn the program over to you. We, the Block by Block is really about you folks getting to know each other and sharing what you're learning. And we feel like the best way to get that started is to have each of you talk a little bit. Um, I do want to, before we start doing that, uh, number one, introduce my partner in crime, Jay Rosen. Uh, and number two, thank our sponsors. Uh, we've been really, really fortunate in the level of support that we've been able to get from the Patterson Foundation, and Janet Coates from Patterson is hiding in the back row there, um, from the Knight Foundation, uh, from the Reynolds Journalism Institute, uh, which has handled all of our logistics and everything, and Jeffrey Beeson is the point person on that. Um, so he's really the one some people look at me and say, thank you for doing all this work. Well, Jeffrey's doing all this work, okay? Um, and also the Night News Innovation Lab, we'll be hearing more from them. And thank you to Loyola for letting us uh, meet here in our special ballroom. Um, okay, so we're gonna get started. Um, what we're gonna do is call out the names of the online sites uh, who are registered in a, roughly in alphabetical order, so you'll have kind of a sense of when you're going to be up. Uh, we want you to answer two questions. What is one important thing you learned this year? And what is one important thing you need to learn? If there are two of you from the same site, you're both welcome to say something. That's, that's up to you. Uh, we've, we've definitely got time to, to do that. Um, okay, Jay, you want to start us off? Yes, um, Michelle didn't mention we want you to wait for the mic so everyone can hear you. And our first site is the Acronist. Thank you. Um, one thing I learned this past year is um, there are plenty of social issues in Akron that aren't getting addressed, which is obvious by this, one of the stories at the top there about a homeless gentleman. Um, being that we're a nonprofit, ad-free site. We've been delving into a lot of social issues. We've been covering a lot of nonprofit activity in the area. And so that's been pretty enlightening, uh, considering I'm a long-term long -term Akron resident. And one thing I hope to accomplish this year, um, actually I'll break it into two things. One is to get more traffic. We just uh, launched the site in January. And another is to continue removing barriers for contributors and for community members to be storytellers. Because part of this program that I run is we also have a full-fledged media center where we train uh, people in video editing and photography and um, news writing. So it's, there, continue, there are continual barriers for people to overcome to be storytellers. So we're, we're going to set up a actual a, a module on the home page where you can tell your story in 10 seconds. It's just going to be a form you fill out. So I want to continue removing those barriers to where anybody can get online and share it. So thanks. Patricio, Alamo City Times. Um, I think it's a daily learning process, really. But what I learned more than anything is that at the beginning, I thought you really need to get funding, you really need to get money. Uh, but what I learned more than anything is that you, what you need more than anything, and above all, is passion and to get people involved. And uh, what I like to do next year, um, I like to uh, continue to increase the uh, community uh, contributors as well as uh, finally really twist my arm and look into monetizing. It's one of those things that I, for some reason, um, just continue to put it aside and just concentrate fully in content and community. Okay, a personal favorite, the Batavian. Where's Howard? The, I don't know, I, I, I guess it's a continuing lesson of, um, you know, just how much work this is uh, to, try to create something and, you know for me this isn't just some hobby I'm doing to try to um, make a living at I want to build 
much larger business, and that motivates uh, the 14, 15, 16 hour days. And um, it's just a lot of work. And then secondly, and related to that, I mean, the, what the future holds or what I want is to make the kind of revenue I think we're capable of, which is two, three, four times of what we're doing now. So just figuring out how to get to that next level is the big challenge. Terminal, Andre. Hey folks, Andre Nada. Um, one thing I learned this year was no matter how stressed out I was getting, I had a lot of support from my community. Um, a lot more than I thought I realized. Um, which has been really, really good to, good to go ahead and hear from. Uh, one thing I plan to do this year, which includes some emails while I'm here, is working out some offline revenue streams for the site. Um, the idea of focusing so much on online and so much on just ad revenue just seems a little crazy. Um, I think if you're going to be a community site, you've got to figure out ways to engage your community, engage your audience, and get them to build buy into it. So there's a couple already um, that may get brought up in a certain person's session tomorrow um, that, we'll, that we'll, they're already taking a look at. Black Hills Knowledge Network. Hi, Eric Abrahamson, uh, Black Hills Knowledge Network in South Dakota. We're a library-based, nonprofit community information kind of aggregation project. And uh, I think the thing that we learned this year is uh, the best way to get community partners is to become the gateway to their content. And um, that's the way to get them invested in your project. And I'm here because I'd really like to learn more about how we can uh, deal with some of the technological issues we're facing. What does library-based mean? It means that we are, a const our project is uh, run by the Black Hills Area Community Foundation, but it's really a cooperative project of uh, about eight uh, local libraries. And our concept is that librarians are doing a lot of the aggregation and tagging of local information so that it's available to um, people in the community. If you, if you think of journalism as being today's news, but sometimes it's difficult to actually build a story through time, we're trying to build that story through time so people can see how that story's really evolved. Center Square Journal. Mike. Uh, well, this has been a fun year. Um, I'd say probably the, the biggest challenge that we have is trying to figure out uh, how to put our efforts into things that reap good results. Um, there's lots of things that you can put work into, but exactly what do you get the best return in, in terms of coverage that you do that people are interested in, in terms of sales efforts that you do that uh, reap results. Um, you know, community building isn't really so much of an issue because it seems like whatever we do, there's a hunger for it. The question is, what can we do that people really, really want? So, Chad Roddy, John. Well, I think what it is that we learned this year is what we actually do best, what we can offer to the community that plays on our strengths. We're actually an all volunteer operation. We all have day jobs. And so what makes the best use of our time? And, and we think that it's explanatory public interest type work. Um, that's what we have found that we get the best results from as far as what we bring that's different than other media outlets in town. Um, and so what we're trying to figure out is what does the model look like for that? If it's not actually fast news and being the first on the scene with things or you know, being the quickest to get a story out, what does the model actually look like it for us over the course of a year to do the kind of work that we do best and find a way to make that sustainable? Okay, this is David Borax and Christina Rogers. This is a site that was born this year, right? I'm here with Christina Rogers, who's the editor that we hired this year in March to uh, expand to our second city. And um, Lindsay Kibalowski is our business manager. And um, what we learned this year is that expanding is possible, it's important, and that marketing is critical when you're doing that. Um, what we hope to learn and accomplish over the next year is uh, figuring out more ways to generate more revenue and to operate as efficiently as possible. Crosscut. Hi, Barrett Anderson with Crosscut.com. Um, I think one of the things, I've actually only been with Crosscut since July, so I haven't been here a full year, but I would say that um, one of the things that we, the organization has learned in the last year is 
Um, we've been trying really hard to diversify our, the voices that are coming out of our site. Um, we're really a, a regional news network, so in that it's unique. We're not really hyper-local. We're not really citywide news network. We're trying to actually represent an entire region, which is the Northwest. Um, and then in terms of things that we hope to do in the next year, I think um, a lot of figuring out how to really connect a lot more with our audience and to use their knowledge and their experiences to add power to our stories and also to help them respond and react to our stories um, through diverting them to different organizations or projects that are going on in the Northwest that relate to specific issues. CU Citizen Access.org. Um, I'm Pam Dempsey, I'm a reporter for CU Citizen Access. Uh, Sorry. Brent, Brent will join us tomorrow. Um, but one thing that we have learned this year, um, and I think we've learned pretty well, is how to work with our local media outlets, um, including um, our local NPR station. Um, and one thing we need more help with is community engagement. Okay. Could you just say a word about what you did with your NPR station? Um, we've done some collaborative projects, um, regional projects looking at food insecurity, um, where we have, um, we've posted stories on our site, um, they've done radio pieces. Uh, we've also have done a look at restaurant inspections recently, um, where they've done, again, we've, we actually produced the radio piece. They did some talk shows around, around that topic and um, brought in uh, the health inspectors that we interviewed for our stories. So we've worked pretty closely on all kinds of things. Right now we're working on doing a um, housing project that will air in June. So it's cross platforms. <clears throat> Seaville tomorrow, Brian Wheeler. Hi, so we're in Central Virginia. We're a community news platform nonprofit there. We're entering our seventh year, but it was coming here last year that the light bulb really went off for me. And what I learned was we did not have the critical mass of staff to do the kind of journalism we wanna do and also engage our community with that information. Um, we're also now in the second year of a partnership. You can see the logo of our uh, daily paper on the right there in the second year of a partnership with our daily paper that um, we're now responsible for about 50% of the newspaper's coverage of growth and development in local politics. It's upped our traffic by 200% and uh, it's increased our donations substantially. So it's, it's really starting to pay off and it's pretty exciting how that partnership has played out. And what, so that's what I learned last year. This partnership's good, I need more people. Fortunately, the Knight Foundation, uh, the Community Information Challenge, we got a grant through that program, which has allowed me to hire my colleague here, Jennifer. And Jennifer is our new community engagement coordinator. So my goal and what I want to learn next is how to plan for her efforts and work with her to have a, a social media and community engagement plan that we can really execute well. Great. Thanks. Great. Number two, you have anything more to say to us, David? This is David's uh, original site. I'll say a little bit about um, when I came here last year to this conference, I, I was wavering a little bit about the future of my business and uh, wasn't really sure whether I was going in the right direction or whether I wanted to keep going. And uh, coming to this conference really gave me a charge. I learned a lot by being here. I talked to people like Howard. I, I saw that Howard is actually a journalist and a businessman. And I, I wasn't seeing myself that way, but I left the conference thinking that's where I needed to go. And so I think one of the other things I learned this year is that we're running a business here. We're, we're journalists. We don't have to surrender our journalistic principles. But in order to keep doing this, if you really like it, you have to figure out how to make it work. So 